Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Very excited for today's review because, man, it's been a minute since I had, since I had a little bit of new Glarus up in this piece. This is their Kid Kolsch. Yeah, uh, I have never had this before. Um, I was lucky enough at my new job, a uh, woman I work with directly, awesome woman, um, she has family out in Wisconsin. <laughs> she went to visit, and me being at the company for, you know, just about a month, I'm like, yeah, you need to bring me back some new glares when you can. <laughs> She's like, what? I'm just like, oh, totally, I'll do that. Um, so I said, just give me a case of spotted cow. I didn't want to, like, bother all that much. She's like, is this work? When she's out there, she texts me a picture. So they had, like, a uh, uh, mix pack. Uh, it had spotted cow in it. Um, it had uh, Moon Man. Um, and it had this and one other beer. I think Simply Naked or something like that. Or something along those lines. So we're going to review a couple of them. I've already done... Uh, spotted cow I've already done uh, moon man so this and probably the other one will get the good review treatment this is their kid Kolsch uh, new glare Brewing company so obviously Kolsch on the side here it says um, you hold an entitled enlightened sorry not enti entitled enlightened throwback ale brewed in the Kolsch tradition of yesteryear beautiful floral s spalt hops were chosen in the field by brewmaster Dan Carey. Crisp bitterness dries quickly into a clean finish. Double decoction mashing of special, specifically blended German and Czech barley and wheat malts. Naturally create a golden bready center. Uh, old world top fermentation imparts lifting, f lilting, sorry, man, words are hard. Lilting fruit notes um, to softly round out this 100% naturally carbonated live ale with a friendly bounce. Done and done. Do we get an ABV? I don't... It's got to be low. I don't know if... I don't know if Luke Glares puts ABV in their bottle. Because I didn't see this on here at all. We'll guess. We'll guess. And then we'll look it up towards the end. How about that? Makes for a fun game. Um, so I'll give that a pop. A nice hiss on it. i got my uh, lager glass out. I'm sure it But, you know, works. Pour all of that sucker in there. Label-wise, you know... It's what New Glarus does, so I'm not going to sit here and get any kind of hot and bothered over it because it's New Glarus. Or I should say the opposite. I, sh I, I can get hot and bothered just because it is New Glarus because anytime I get one of the beers, I get, again, hot and bothered. Beer-wise, uh, definitely looks the part of a craft cold. So it has a soft little haze to it. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. Straw in color. Um, just over index finger of a pillowy little bit soapy kind of edge to it so it definitely looks the part of a little crusher beer yeah pretty pretty let's see if we get a nose on this sucker mm. very much malt driven here in that combination of that um that that wheat and malt combination really does shine through here it give me a little bit of kind of wheat vibes here almost like a little bit of gazetti vibes to a certain extent maybe there's you know a specific kind of yeast they're using on this that comes off that way, but it definitely has that kind of a French kind of saison thing in blended with kind of a Kolsch kind of vibe to it. So it definitely has that crisp cleanness to it, that chuggability to it, but there's something a little bit more there to the malt side of things. And like I said, there's that combination of that malt slash wheat kind of combination, which just leans it into that kind of like, not wheat beer territory, but something a little bit grisetti, something along those lines. It's a little bit more saison-esque, something along those lines. Yeah, smells quite nice. Smells bright. Smells summery. Let's dive in. Cheers, y'all. Wow. I wasn't thinking it was going to be that bittering. Not that it's crazy bittering. It's not like check level um, pills kind of bittering. But it has this nice pop of bittering to it. In combination with this nice beautiful fruitiness and again this floral fruitiness that they kind of talk about in the label really does come through here uh very much kind of like um again i came leading into that saisani kind of vibe to it it has that little bit of kind of flora fauna kind of open inoculation kind of thing going on to where it makes me think kind of a saison like very kind of more wild like not sour not tart none of that it's just the way the yeast kind of comes off here the way that plays the malts and the hops it really does come off as more of a grisette i keep going back to the word grisette because i think that's the best way for me to kind of kind of compartmentalize this beer because it really doesn't come off as a traditional culture for me and that combination with that base malt with that wheat gives you a little bit of wheat vibe 
I mean, again, you get that nice kind of a little bit of extra zip from a yeast that's showing a little bit more than you typically get from a Kolsch, a little bit more fruitiness, a little bit more, even slightly, slightly spiciness, like pepperiness and something like that. And then when you combine those little bit of kind of old school kind of hops in there, it comes off very much kind of like, I don't even, I, I, I might even shift to like Belgian table beer kind of vibe to it. That's the way this really does come off for me. I'm not hating it. Diving into this blind, if it was a mystery beer and I didn't know what it was, I don't know if I ever really land on Kolsch. The words might come out of my mouth and I'm just like word selling, salading a, um, a mystery beer review. Um, but it really does come off a little bit more kind of, again, Belgian table beer, a little bit of Cezanne, French Grisetti kind of thing going off on this. And I dig it. I like it quite a bit. It's probably one of the more showier, what I assume is low ABV, um, New Glarus beers. Let me look up the ABV. Let's guess on it. Um, Kid Kolsch, I think it's 5.2. I want to go lower, um, but there's something, there's a touch of heft to this. Um, again, not huge, but 5.5, uh, so we're close. Um, that has me getting a little bit higher in ABV. But um, yeah, let me shut down this blaring white screen um so yeah uh i think this is actually a, a very su pleasantly surprising delicious beer outside of what you, you expect based off of the name on a label not for me traditionally a cult but it's given me deliciousness <laughs> so if we're you know doing the whole bjcp thing which we don't do we would knock it on style but we're not going to do that we're going to say it's a delicious lowish abv crusher and i dig it i dig it Done and done. Um, this is one of the better cultures I've had as late. It's not really a culture. One of the better table beers, lower EBV ales. Chugger ales that I had as late. Yes, not rush percent. This might be out on the inside looking in, but very tasty nonetheless. Value and availability on this 17 American dollars for half a case for of um, four. You said it was uh, four different beers, so three different beers, so it was 12 beers for 17 bucks. Yeah. And leave you with if you like what we like this. Um, Wisconsin only, by the way. Uh, if you like Belgian table beer, if you like grisettes, if you like low, like very mild, um, low acidity, low pH kind of um, table saison kind of farmhouse ales, and if you like Kolsch, but you want something with a little bit more of a, a spin to it, you'll dig on this. If you like good, well-made, low ABV beer, you'll dig this. So there we go. Review in the books. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Um, New Glarus, have you been to the brewery? I never have. Have you had their beers? I've had a few. Have you had this beer? What's your favorite New Glarus beer you've ever had? All that fun stuff down there. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of a uh, colshy goodness right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.